Hey awesome RC fans, welcome to TJ's RC. For this episode, I thought we would do a little experiment. I went on to eBay and I picked up the cheapest brass portal weights that I could find. The question is, can the cheapest brass portal weights do a decent enough job to make it worthwhile? Hold the phone there, buddy. That is not the right question you should be asking. The question isn't, can the cheapest brass portal weights work? The right question should have been, can they work without any effort on your part? Nope. That's not how it happened. But they do work in the end. Just took a little extra effort. Now, if you aren't confident in your ability to make parts work together, getting the old Dremel out, making the pieces fit if they don't already, then I would suggest not getting the cheapest ones possible and save up for some high quality parts that you can trust are actually going to go together the right way. However, that's what I did and I wanted to see if I could make it work. And I did, as you'll see later in the video. With that said, let's get back to the video. To measure whether or not there's actually any benefit, we're going to set up a slope board at an angle. See what angle is too much for the Bronco to handle in its current form. Then we're going to go ahead and add the weights. And then after that, we will again try the slope board to see if we can increase that angle and make it climb better. Test. This is where the way the truck is currently set up right now. We're going to check the angle right now with this level. 50 degree angle at the moment. So we're going to try that first. degrees it gets almost all the way to the top all right we've increased the angle to 53 degrees let's see how it does now One more try at 53 degrees. Alright, so it looks like the truck handled the 50 degree angle pretty well. Went up to the top on its own just fine. But then as soon as we upped it a little bit, went to 53, that was a little bit more than she could handle as she currently sits. So let's come over to the bench, get these things installed. If you've watched some of my other videos, you've already seen me disassemble this thing. So why don't we go ahead and skip the disassembling and just jump straight to having the axle in front of us. Well, from here, we're just gonna go ahead and start disassembling both sides of this because the only thing that we're going to be keeping here is the center section. We got new brass weighted C-hubs, and then we got both of the inner and outer portal gear cover pieces. Let's go ahead and get this thing apart. There we go. This is the only part that we're going to keep. You suppose while we got it this far apart, I ought to take this cover off and just peek inside there and make sure everything's still good after all the water running and crossing we've done? Yeah, I think so too. Well, that actually looks pretty good. Nothing to be worried about there at all. All right, that looks good inside there, so let's go ahead and set that aside. We're going to go ahead and disassemble these now. For these smaller screws, that basically just hold this bearing in place here. You'll need a 1.5 millimeter hex head. All right, came out nicely. The rest of these are just standard two millimeter. All right, so now that we got that completely apart, I'm gonna go ahead and start assembling this one. Try to get as much brass filings out of there as I can. Because I did to try to make the cheapest brass I could find work, 
I did have a little bit of fitment issue with these pieces not wanting to go together. But I took my Dremel and a small sanding disc and I just kind of went around gently on the inside edge of this piece and then gently on the outside edge of this lip here a little bit at a time until finally they snap together. We'll see if the rest of the machining work on the inside here is up to par or not. A tiny amount of oil in there. Hopefully that will help the uh, bearing to slide into place. Some tweezers work good in this way. All right, that bearing went into place. In there. And we're gonna go ahead and add a little grease in there. We're gonna put the uh, keeper screws back in for this bearing here. But since we're gonna have steel, a uh, metal on metal, in these holes, we're gonna use a little bit of the blue thread lock. Okay, I said a little, that's a little bit too much, but it'll be all right. I can't be the keeper screw it. So what I ran into here is that this hole on the bottom is not as deep as these keeper bolts that go here aren't gonna work, but they did send a super short one it's a different style than the ones that were originally on there. I think it's going to be okay. That's not in an area that's going to bind against anything, so that'll be fine. Halves are ready to be assembled now. There's a layer of grease covering everything, the bearings, the gears. And like I said earlier, I don't want to get too much grease in there because then I don't, I don't want the grease to prevent them from going together. You won't be able to reuse the stock screws that are used on here. Because it's so much thicker, these screws will be too short, but it does come with longer screws. I know that putting some of this Loctite in a small soda cap or a small little, a tiny little tray makes for easy dipping while you're doing something like this, but you know what? I just don't have anything like that handy at the moment. And I'm too lazy to get up and go find something. We'll just keep doing it this way. All right, so that brings the two halves together. Let's go ahead and install the uh, hex adapter on there. Check this out. This notch right here lines up so that you can screw the hex adapter down. How about that, huh? All right, well, this is the completely finished portal gearbox. Now, let's go ahead and assemble this side. Now we just need the bushings. I'm put a tiny bit of grease on here. All right, that is the complete assembled right side. I'm not gonna make you uh, watch me assemble the other side. We'll just snap the fingers here. And there it is. Looks pretty good underneath there. Got the both sides completely finished and installed. I will say for sure, they do add some weight. It feels You can feel it as you pick the truck up. It just feels heavier. While I had the truck up here, I thought maybe I should do an oil change. So I got my catch pan out to uh, let the oil drain out before we uh, put a new filter in there. After we get that changed, we're going to take her to the ramp and see if it made an improvement. Let's do it. So when we tried this earlier, 53 degrees is where the truck lost traction and went over backwards. Because I think it's going to do better, I went ahead and I set the ramp to 55 degrees. So 
So right here at the bottom, it seems kind of slick. There's just a little pressure. Once it starts to go, then it actually works. Look at that. I don't have the best traction aid on there. This this carpet's not very this thin carpet is not very sticky. I'm sure if I had a stickier substance then it, then it would go much better. Yeah. Well, it's not flipping over backwards. It's just losing traction. This just isn't the stickiest. It was the stickiest thing I could find to put on here. All right. Well, there was nothing scientific about that test at all. However, it was enough confirmation for me to convince me that they help. They help some. The truck didn't go over backwards, even at that higher angle. What happened is we lost traction. So I need to come up with a better way of testing that. I think I could definitely get the truck at a steeper angle beyond 55 degrees if I had a better uh, traction material on that board. Uh, let me know in the comments if you have any ideas for what would be a cheap material that could work on that ramp. I do need to highlight something though. If you decide to go this route, uh, adding weighted brass to your TRX4. If you don't feel comfortable taking out a Dremel and making the pieces fit together, uh, definitely don't get the cheapest ones possible. My goal at the beginning was to, can I get the cheapest ones possible and still make them work? Well, I had to make them work. There was, I had to get my Dremel out. The second side that I did off camera took a lot more work to make work. Once I got uh, the pieces to fit together and I installed all the internals and tightened everything down, it didn't turn. Something was pinched. I had to take it back apart and find the spot where the gear was being pinched and then get in there and grind a little bit away so that I could free that up. Now it spins smooth and fine, no problems. But if you're not confident in your ability to take a small Dremel in there and do that, save up get the brand name, the high quality versions of these products because they probably go together a lot smoother and you won't have to force the pieces to work together. And work, I think they are going to do. I think they're going to work great. I think it's going to help out on the trails and on the rocks. You know, time and some miles down the trail will definitely prove whether or not they will. But initial impression is that uh, I think they're going to think they're going to be all right. I do want to revisit this ramp idea though. At the very least, it's something fun to do with your RCs in your garage. If it's a rainy day or cold, or if you just want to go outside for some reason. So I'm going to revisit that ramp thing. I just got to come up with a better substance for the traction surface. Again, leave me a comment if you got a good idea for a cheap way to go about that. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the fun here on the channel. You guys are awesome. We'll see you in the next one.